incredibly helpful, super supportive, helping us organize things, get recognition on the web portal, get prize support lined up. We failed to get giveaway codes this week. We're going to fix that, I think, for next week. I talked to him about that last night. Um, and so like just having that level of support from someone in your same time zone on your same side of the ocean uh, is fantastic. And it's something that I know the Supremacy League guys have really struggled with in the past. And, and are, you know, I know I've talked to Voss. He's just as, as excited to me as, as I am to have that level uh, of support. And, and, and Radar, to his credit, and, I, and I've heard him say this at least twice now, he understands that, you know, we're the ones doing all the legwork, putting this tournament together. He's just there to support us and make it as successful as possible. Right. All right, well, we're dropping here as we move to on move on to trap for game two. Go ahead, Gus. And I mean, you know, the, the, wargaming can do as little or as much as they want to on this. So it's kind of cool that they're they're saying, hey, you know, what can we do? How can we make it better? Um, you know, the, the giveaway codes for for us is awesome. Um, getting getting our names up on the on the website even more awesome. So. Yep. So let's talk APOC. How cool are you? Surprise. Montana Republic. Cleo taking the Republic now. Uh, Des Moines. France represent. Yep. And uh, Sneaky Snake is being ultra sneaky with the Zao this time. And Griefer. The Zao in Moscow. Yeah. Griefer's new. Was I don't think he was in the last game. He was not. Yeah. Um, looks like they have. Uh, I can't tell who they've dropped. Anyway. Same lineup. Uh, down to a man, all the way down for Rust. No changes here. Interesting. Once again, we see so many gearings. I have a strong again, feeling yeah. that's going to change over time. You think so? Yeah. Change to what? Um, I think we're going to see some mo some uh, some Z fifty twos, and I think we're going to see some Girls of Voice too. Well, we've seen a few grows of voice tonight. Not nearly as many gearings as we've seen, but we have seen a few grows of voice. Yes. All, All right. right. Quick look at a rust de deployment here. Gearing going to A. Gearing going to B. It looks like they have just uh, gonna they're gonna give C up and work A B here. Hindenburg, Des Moines, Montana, and Gearing heading south to A. Montana, Hindenburg, Des Moines, and Gearing. Yeah, there you go. They've split their 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 team basically into two units of that are identical. Yeah, and this time we're seeing so we're seeing Zhao, Montana, and and Gearing, excuse me, going to C Cap. Moskva Griefer is choosing not to post up a typical Moskva camp spot, which is interesting. Or is he? Wait. I'll have to see what he does. I think he's yeah, I, I think... would ex I would expect to find him lurking around the islands of B. Maybe even with his bow stuck into that gap on the F G line right there, you know, something like that. That's it. Almost looks like I thought that's what he might do, but I think he's actually going farther north. I think he's gonna go up to uh, the EF line at at uh, column six and just kind of hang out there, kind of dare okay. the enemy to go past into C cap. Well, that also gives him a little more flexibility to uh, to deploy his radar on C cap if needed as well, right? Like his radar should reach that far, or, or it should cover a large a large chunk of sea cap from that position. Yep. He's spotted here, moving through the gap. Shells coming in. He's turning in. Oh, these, are, these are Montana shells. It'll be ugly. Oh, 20k. Oh, takes a 20k hit here early, trying just trying to get into position. Big solid hit there from which Montana? That'd be the Montana on the. One line, Uncle Oter. You, th you oh. think? So? No, not, yeah, not where right. those shells you're came right. from. You're that right. was Oter shells. Yep. Yep. Well, let's see which gearing is that an A? SBC. Oh! No. Griefer just oh, another... lost even more. Oh. Yeah, Griefer just took another massive salvo, just trying to get into position there. Well, he sat there and uh, yep. paid the price. Silver, silver now capping A. Uh, is A contested? A is contested as one of the other destroyers for APOC is into B. I'm sorry, is into C. Yep. Now SBC is in the gap between B and C. He's in D6. I'm a little surprised. I kind of expected, and now that they know 
that where both enemy destroyers are, why not move into B? But I guess it was too late. He'd already committed to this path. I think he's trying to get spots on the Moskva. Yeah, Griefer, by the way, is at 8,000 damage right now, or health. I mean, he's... Goodness gracious. Yeah. Um, that that choice to go to that other island has really punished him. Well, he was definitely spotted in the gap. It's it's a, gonna... lot of, a lot of APOC firepower outside of C. We see we're sneaky, and one of the Montanas were... Sorry, that is the only Montana. It's boot camp. Boot camp, sneaky, and one of the gearings up at sea. Yeah, Onter is going to take a torp here, maybe. Lime killer is okay. Yeah, I think Onter, Onter is has take time one. to dodge them. Let's see if he can pull it off. He's going for the gap. Nope, looks like he's going to eat one. Yeah. Doink. Yep, we see now Apoc pulling back out of A. Silver uh, SBC now has turned around, is headed back to B as, which Hindenburg is this? Biggie has poked his bow into B to start flipping B. Mm -hmm. For ballsy Rust, move. that's pretty ballsy. Super ballsy to try and cap B with a Hindenburg. Damn. Five minutes gone now, both teams are working one cap. APOC with a small lead here on the strength of their early cap. A yeah. torpedo strike now coming in for Biggie as he dives deeper into B. He might actually bag it. I don't know that anybody's got shots on it. Yeah, uh, he's probably... Oh, Republic shots coming in. Yeah, it's coming from the south. There it is. There's the reset. They, they, do land a, they do land a big hit on I mean, you, you got to figure Biggie is running anti-air, so... Uh, boot is, camp got another I'm hit. Just, yeah, I'm just questioning this push. Like, in SPC, in my mind, like he should be in there now smoking Biggie. Yes. More Republic shells coming in. Another good-sized hit. Republic Shell's chewing up Biggie here as he tries to cap B on behalf of Rust. He's totally exposed. He's about to run aground. No, that's not right. That's the boot camp maneuver. Yep. Biggie pulls a Notzer here in B as the uh -oh. points continue to get reset from all, like I know, all of the different shells coming down on him from the north. I can't imagine he's going to live very long. I can't no. believe SBC didn't cut through that gap and go down there smoking. I'm, I'm assuming that's just bad communication. Yep. Um, there's SBC. Now he's spotted and obviously going to be torping boot camp. So we'll have to see if Boot's able to. Yep. Torps are already yeah. out. Fighter probably spotting them now. Boot is getting ready for a shot. Here it comes. We're going to follow Shell Cam. It's not going to get the kill. No. Well, maybe. Nah. No. Nah. Decent damage out of it, though. Digging oh, yeah. down to 7,000 HP. Highly exposed in B. Lots of shells continuing to come in. Lime Killer burning down Tyrael down at A. Big, the big rust. We haven't been covering it, but there's a big rust push at A that's working well for them. Well, Tyrael go got got stuck, right? He was trying to reverse yeah. out of it, but the rest of his team abandoned him. So, well, each team on one kill now. As um, Apoc again with their working that little 30, 40 point lead they have on the strength of their quicker cap. Yeah, but look at what was given up to to take out A um, and to well, take out Tyrael. I guess to me, like if I'm if I'm the rust caller, I'm really frustrated right now because Biggie basically threw his ship away for nothing. Yep. He sailed into the cap, he took a lot of focus fire, and died. That's all he really did. I feel I kind of feel bad for them. SBC now smokes rust to dust. That'll they give them the ability to kind of hold that pushback somewhat. Bootcamp took took a couple of big hits somewhere. He's on forty thousand. Yeah, and Tyrell took some hits too. He's at thirty k. Hunter's dead. Tyrell. Who? Tyrael's dead. Andrew. Montana down Andrew south is dead. Well, he's healing and burning. And healing and burning. <laughs> and Lots healing of shells and coming in, I'm sure. And healing and burning, yep. He just put this the is, fires out. This is a problem Republic shells. He's out. that we Has see an awful lot in competitive. Is Overextended. When, he shouldn't have been that far forward. Right, but I mean, on the APOC side, they assumed he was dead. They called him dead. And he didn't die until they went back and shot him again. Yeah. So that, I'm, that's I'm really I'm just really surprised there. I mean, there was no need for him to be that far forward. They had the cap at that point. I think I probably would have gone ahead and turned north. Yeah. Also, though, I think um, that push into B cap. To be honest, if it wasn't for Cleo and the Republic, I think it actually might have gotten Ooh. the B cap. Midway finally polishing off Griefer's Moskva there. That's actually, you know, and I was just fixing to point out, um, Rust has been trading health better. They have a health advantage right now. Oh, yeah. SPC trying to cap B, racing for the island cover of 
if he's going to make it, I don't know. Lots of shells coming in. Mega now on the other side of that island. There's no way that both of these teams will, will work this cap. Yeah, Mega but under Silver's a lot of pressure now as well. Silver's coming in from the south as well. Big rumble at B here oh, now. Oh, Sneaky got him. Sneaky bags, re SBCs gearing on the eastern side, western side of B there. APOC up a ship as both teams contest B. Rust is looking much better. I still feel really, still really feel like Biggie just, he didn't need to do that. He didn't need to throw his ship away like that. No. Well, and I mean, let's face it. Had the, had that destroyer, like you were saying, come in with him, he wouldn't have thrown his ship away. And I think yeah. that's probably what they were originally thinking of. But the destroyer captain maybe just didn't take the, the call. Silver now is in trouble. He's about to ram the island again. He's still in smoke. He's got a double torpedo salvo coming in. And he's stationary as they come right up his stern. I don't know if he's going to be able to dodge all of these. Let's see how he pulls it off. If he can pull it off. There we go. Turn the right way and he can. Yep, he's good. He got an arrow. Aww. You got Looks me out. looking for nothing. That's okay. Silver survives, dodges the torps. Now we see Rust pushing through the gap here, north of A, coming to B with uh, Lime Killer Sinnenberg, and I'm not even going to oh. attempt to pronounce that poor that guy's name, but the Des Moines with him. Cleo just got chunked for 10k from uh, K538. Leo's in, a, in an interesting spot. I don't like his positioning here. He should be heading north to get behind the island for cover. Instead, he's heading out to open sea. Yeah. Big hit on Lime Killer, though. Mega Fanzo dude. trying to push through a torpedo strike with the, against the Des Moines and a Hindenburg? It's questionable. Hmm. That, that, I must say, none of those planes are even going to survive to drop. Lime Killer focused now by Elastic Spiders, Hindenburg, and Cleo's Republic, but Cleo's Republic under quite a bit of pressure as well on 15k and falling. <laughs> wow. Lime Killer is under 10. He's still struggling. Here comes Glorious French Dispersion. Look at these shots. Look at the shells. Dear God, look at those shells. That's ridiculous. They're on top of each other. But they go Done. over. But Boot Camp calls it a day. Can't hide. If, and when you're that far forward and that exposed, you can't hide from everybody. As Lime Killer's Hindenburg goes down south of B. Rust now two ships down, 240 points down. Both teams ticking up points at the same rate as this Des Moines now showing a brilliant broadside to a Hindenburg and a Republic. But <laughs> brilliant broadside. Right <laughs> Here comes Boot Camp with his guns. He's moving up. I assume he's going to try and radar Mega Dude up north and drive him out of the cab. Again. Yeah, big hits, right? We're just... He's trading. He's just giving up a tremendous amount of health for this. Here comes the next set. This might kill him. Rust used to have about a fifty or sixty thousand HP advantage. Here comes shells. Nope. Oh, now they're down. They're down HP. Oh yeah, they just threw a lot of that away. Yeah, I, I, the, 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 yeah, I'm not sure why. Rust uh, K538 now moving into B with his Montana. Looks like he's going to try and take on Boot. Which way are his guns pointed? Oh, sneaky takes pointed north. The carrier just did, wow. Uh, I didn't AP even bombs. notice it's a midway. A AP bombs doing work. I yeah. didn't notice it was a midway either. <laughs> is midway doing to APOC what they once did to STW last season. Beautiful cross torps here on K five thirty eight. No way is he gonna dodge them all. Just one though. Takes That's one pretty good. Stern. Yep. Silver Doc took a torp as well. This is what APOC calls the big dick play that's happening in B right now by <laughs> K538. Well, Rust to Dust now in a position to, to skirt past Oof. the boot camp. Mm. To what torpedoes that were well spotted taking out a, an Encephal. I'm not even I'm horrible with that name. Yeah. This Rust Des Moines. Now 538 is kind of screwed. He can he can angle towards the Hindenburg and... He can't, he can't angle yeah. to both. Right. Oh, He's right but, in the center of the map. You can't angle to both. It's not possible. Boot Camp is getting two torps from... Boot Camp is getting yeah. busted. Oh, oh, I, we're Montana gonna Stern Turret's coming out. Is he going to trade? Nope. K-538 turning to go bow in on Boot Camp. Boot Camp oh. healing. 538 not making it. Republic seeing to that. Boot Camp on fire. No, he's not on fire. He's healing, though. 
Yeah, but boot camp's getting his bow penned by by Rust to Dust. Rust to Dust now has no eyes on him anymore. Nope. There's the midway. There he is. And boot camp goes down. Rust to Dust is clear. But he and Silver Dock's gearing and B are the only two ships that, well, the only two surface ships that. The big um, shots coming in. Rust has left on the board. Now they're missing. Yep. False premises midway is down near dear A. One of the gearings might push through there and have shots on him for a while. Yeah, He's Mega's down got there him. Yep, there's the bombers. Mega's coming through, coming through the gap, and fighter cover coming over there to help protect Mega's gearing a little bit. Yeah, they're AP bombs. What are they gonna do to them? You and I can both completely miss that it was a midway. <laughs> I can't believe we missed that. That's I said there was no change. I said there was no change for the Rust team, and it was like, no, yeah, there's a change, you dummy. And I missed it completely. False Permises takes a pretty big hit there. A couple of Citadels from the Republic. As he reverses now. Yep, and secondaries from the midway coming, reaching out. Not like it matters. Rust oh, here come the Torps. Reoriented here outside of B. That's all she wrote. Mega bags himself a midway with Torps. That's going to pretty much do it for Rust. Too many points down, too many caps down as Rust to Dust Des Moines trying to get around and spot this gearing. Uh oh, second wave coming. Is he gonna dodge him? One in the bow. Nope, one in the bow is all he gets. I'm a little surprised we haven't seen a radar out of this Des Moines in a while. Maybe he's out. Silver Dock's gearing now being hounded by planes and pursued by spiders. Hindenburg will oh, go yeah. out of the game here momentarily. So, Zeth, I mean, looking back on it, I feel like Rust played a pretty pretty solid game early. I liked the, I liked the early game aggressiveness, the push through A, but I think yep. they pushed too far and too fast, right? Like, yep. you, you look at where Ownter died, there was no need for him to be on that side of the cap. No. And that, that comes into inexperience as well, because, you know, when... We know from playing so much competitive that it's, it's all about um, timing the push and when you're running away and you're forcing the enemy to push into you, you gain the advantage as the defender. And we see that happening here. They pushed way too hard out of A into into APOC that was kind of kiting away. And they paid the price yep. for that. Yep. Well, APOC gonna sweep the table here in group group is this. Get what group this is. Group whatever it is. <laughs> and Rust has a fortunate beach. Group three. As he survives. Yep. APOC runs the table in group three, going 3 0. They will be the top seed coming out of group three. Rust will be the number two seed coming out of group three. And both teams will be moving on to next weekend's top 24. Yeah. Congratulations to both teams. I got to say, this, Absolutely. this game was far better. I enjoyed casting this one quite a bit. Absolutely. Looking at playing kills this time, actually, Fan whatever Nakuryu got top spot, which is interesting. All right, hold on a minute. I want to see something. I don't think. I gotta, put, I gotta check something. Check away. People in my chat have been commenting about that Moss was positioning at the start, and yeah, that that was a huge mistake, and unfortunately, Rust wasn't able to capitalize on that mistake early in. Cleo also should have died, but we didn't see him dying. So Zaf. Yes. Would you would you like to keep casting? I can offer you a Falco and WPP match. Ooh, Falco, sure. All right, let's do it. I, I love how you can offer me these things. I love it. All right. Pac takes down Rust as Zath and I, I think we're going to be moving on to Falco and WPP. Let's see. They are in Group 2. Now, these are the two bottom teams in Group 2. Looks like they're running a little behind tonight. Okay. Okay, he's... I told the Falco guy we wanted to come cast. He's checking on something here. I 
meantime, let's have a quick look at group stage. While you're doing that, I'm replaying the, uh, the intro video because I really like the job. I'm guessing Sneaky did this one? Yes, that is Sneaky's work. Speaking of which, you want to bring him in for a couple minutes? Fine with me. Oh, he's here. We can drag him down. Hey, and I can, uh, he's already unmuted. Hey, Sneaky, what's up? Hey, guys, what's up? Hey, watching your video, man. Nice job. Yeah. Again, because I thought it was that good. Give, give Sneaky a high five in advance because he's doing our highlight videos in between weeks as well. So I need to suck up to him more so I can get some of my footage featured. Is that the case? So one thing that I like about this King of the Sea is that it's a it's a much quicker tournament. I mean, it's done. Whereas the old Supremacy League, man, that was like months long. It was almost like Clan Battles is now. Yeah, well, you know, we play, we play King of the Sea for weeks. Talking to Radar last night, um, you know, I, 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 I was kind of relaying to him a conversation that I've had with Pigeon of War a few times, which is what we would really, what I would prefer. This is me, my personal opinion, nobody else's. I would vastly prefer it if we would run like a, a you know, clan battles would run two patch cycles, let's say, eight weeks. Then you'd have a patch cycle off of no competitive play at all, no ranked, no clan battles, nothing. Four weeks. Then start a season of ranked, right? Ranked runs six, seven, eight weeks, whatever it runs. Then again, take another patch cycle off, have a break. And then again, go back to clan battles. So that basically every quarter, every three patch cycles, you have uh, every quarter, once a quarter, you're either running clan battles or ranked. And in between the clan battles, you can put on a King of the Sea tournament. So that every yep. quarter, there's some kind of competitive event going on in World of Warships, whether it's clan battles or King of the Sea. And But there's enough of a gap in between these events that you're not frying people from the fact that they want to participate in these things, and there's just not enough time to do it all. Absolutely. Well, plus we haven't, it's been a long time since we've seen like Clash of the Elements or the old Pearl event. 